All right, you guys. Forget, forget what you just saw. <laughs> All right, you guys, to start off this build, I wanted to make sure that I can fit the 9,700 milliamp batteries in here. And in order to do that, you've actually got to remove the two screws underneath the chassis, right? They're normally here and here. I just shifted them over to the middle section and, or the middle hole and the far right hole. And then there's a slider in here and these ridges. So. You can actually move this precisely where you need it to be for the size of your batteries, keeping in mind the wires have to come out of there um, without getting pinched. But you set that once, screw it down, and if you plan on using the same batteries each time, you only have to set it once. So for these batteries, open them up all the way, gave me plenty of room for the wires to come out of here like this, and I can even tuck in the balance wire right there. Um, as long as you got the straps in tight, it doesn't really move back and forth. And if I wanted, I can even have them flat like this. Still enough room to put the balance port down there and have the wires coming out this side. It actually makes for an even more snug fit. Um, and then the wires can just come out this way where the ESC would fit. As far as the straps, um, it's actually easy enough once you get them strapped on like this, just tuck it down in here as far as they'll go, but leave a little bit of a lip so that when you're finished, you can actually just reach in, grab, and pull that right off. Whenever you're taking the battery out, just pro tip, bring this all the way to the edge like this, and then fold it over and lock it so that you don't get annoyed with trying to feed that back in. So again, just bringing that out like this, trying to do this one handed like that, and then you should be able to lift it up and out without having to take those off. You can just leave them just like that until you're ready to bash again. Next up is installing the servo, and we went with the Savix SW0241MG. So this is a waterproof servo. It has, let's see, 555 ounce inches of torque. So it should be plenty of torque for our application. Let's go ahead and open this up for you guys. All the different adapters. Not sure what we're gonna use yet. Some stickers, it's always nice to have and the gigantic fifth scale servo right there. So not that long of a wire, but since it's only coming, going from here right into this box, it's actually really nice. So following along with the instructions, first up we're gonna mount the servo to the fifth scale receiver box. In this orientation, using these four screws and these four washers. With those four screws on, now we can go ahead and insert this foam little piece into the receiver box and the servo wire will just go right into there. Sometimes it's easier if you actually put the foam around the wire first and then insert it. There we go. That way we can ensure that that goes all the way to the bottom and we can pull this in just like that. Perfect. Oh, and I guess it's a good time to note we're using the same receiver that I've been using in most of my other RCs. So now that the servo is on, we need to install the servo saver. So it's saying that we need to remove that steering link from the truck. So that is this one right here. We'll remove that screw, take it out. Just taking everything out of the steering servo pack. Um, it's a little unorganized, but this is everything that it comes with. So if you want to compare yours to this one, make sure you have everything. We'll go ahead and move on to step two and get that arm installed onto the steering servo saver. All right, so we had to get the M3 by 25 screw through the back of here. Um, this little pivot ball I actually had to press on with a vise um, so that it goes on smoothly. And then there's two washers, one thick one like this and one thin one. You use the thin one before putting on this locking nut on the end. And then that part's done. For this next step, we're going to need to make sure our transmitter steering trim is set to neutral. All right, so I had to use the 
limitless for this. It was just the easiest to get to the receiver for. Used a quick little jumper cable, plugged up a battery, and connected the servo to the receiver. Got the trim set to neutral. And we're also good to go ahead and make sure that that's set. Now we can shut it off. And we know that that is set to neutral now. There's a little line in here. Hopefully you guys can see that right up top. We're actually gonna offset this to the right by one tooth and then get that installed. Then we'll continue. So that gets pressed on just like that, slightly offset to the right. And we don't need this piece. It's calling for a little bit of grease on the small and large O-rings. Small one goes right around this ring here. Large one goes right around this ring. And then we'll continue from there. And it looks like it's asking for some grease around both the springs and that retaining uh, clip, whatever this thing is here. So we'll get all that taken care of. You can see the, the alignment there of that piece. Yeah, I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, you guys, <laughs> forget, forget what you just saw. <laughs> well, what I was gonna say is forget the uh, terrible pair of gloves that I have on, but uh, man, that was funny. Okay, so everything needs to be greased up and then put together and I felt like it was going to be a little too difficult to try to put everything together and then explain it. So I'm just going to do this part and you guys can watch the process. So we're just going to lightly grease these two springs and they want some grease on. All right, I found it. It was still down inside there. So let me get some new gloves. Just drops down in there. Washer. Put that down in there this down in there and we just got to keep in mind that this needs to line up with that line as well and then when we drop this down in there this line has to line up as well I see so this needs to be flipped around the other way in order to fit on so it looks like you can't put it together incorrectly so just turn it so that it fits but this has got to line up and then now from here we can go ahead and drop this on line this up but as this gets pushed down we need one well, i'm going to take one of these gloves off we're going to need this thicker washer here and this screw All right, so that is threaded all the way on. Good deal. So now we have this piece here. I'll take this glove off. <laughs> Put the gear or the grease cap back on. Now we've got this. Let me see if this fits. Nope, of course it doesn't. All right, so this is reverse threads. This goes on next. Perfect. So now we've got the ball bearing. Drops right there. And then finally this piece, it looks like this just gets pushed on like so and rests. So this gets screwed back on once we have that back on the car. I see, so this, once this gets placed in the car, this is actually going to insert into a slot to keep this half of the steering assembly up and then that ball bearing allows it to just spin on that pivot okay so that makes sense they have an extra one um keep that ball keep that bearing in there i don't know if that's because this piece will wear out over time but that's just something to note so i'll keep that with all of my spare parts. All right, so servo side is done along with the servo saver. So now we just gotta wait for the ESC and the motor to show up in the mail, and then we can finish this part of the build. Oh, and in case you didn't notice, put the gasket on here, and then the other side of the receiver box, I put that foam down in there. 
one of the antenna wires will come out through here and then the antenna will just stick out right there. This particular receiver has two antenna wires and they're gonna need to be perpendicular. So I'll have to figure out where I want to put the other one. I'll probably just drill a hole somewhere, making sure it's pointing the right direction. Also these four M4 by 12 screws are what's gonna be used to ensure that this stays in the vehicle. So in case you were wondering what those were for, as I figure out what the rest are for, I'll let you guys know. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the receiver inside of the box. And luckily with the way that this is mounted, I can still get to the bind button. Buy screw. Uh, I can still get to the bind button right in there. So this is what I've used. No issues in the past. I've got that right in the middle. And I can still get to that bind button. One more correction. So this small foam piece actually goes right in here and that's because the receiver I'm sorry the ESC sits right on top and that allows for the wire to pass through this lid into the box so pretty smart design these six screws along the top actually take these guys here so they are I believe M3 either way Six of the small screws like that from that pack go along the top here to secure the top to the bottom of the receiver box.